Hi everyone, and welcome to another Stackland Studio experience. So, I, <sighs> this video, if you've watched my last two streams, you knew that it was coming. Uh, it's time to talk about OBS and other solutions that creators can use to broadcast online. Because, sad fact is that OBS does not care, nor do they plan to. So, let's talk about it and get my opinions on both sides of the story, and ultimately what I think should be done and what isn't being done. This is not okay. <laughs> So, a lot of people thought that Not Okay wouldn't take off, and frankly, maybe they were right. I don't know if Not Okay should be a thing, or maybe should be left in with the Jack Links issue. That never got officially resolved, um, because they kept telling me to contact them, and I contacted them, and they refused to get back with me. I have not heard anything from their PR department. Nothing. And I doubt that I'll hear anything. Walmart hasn't responded. And Jack Links, after I posted that tweet, they've said nothing. They've tweeted nothing at me. They've not favorited anything. They've not said anything. They've just been quiet. And it's kind of unfair. But... It is whatever it is. So, let's go ahead and talk about this new issue from OBS. And if you don't know, OBS is Open Broadcast Software. It is essentially the largest broadcasting project um, known to the broadcasting world. They, besides XSplit, this company pretty much has the second most customer base besides XSplit. And the reason that that may be is because they may buy out other forks of other projects, such as FF Split, which is openly sh now shut down and abandoned all hope, essentially, since 2015, which was their last retweet um, that they ever made. And the last post was late 2015. So they haven't posted in a year and, say, a half. Uh, if you count what's left of uh, the 2015 after they posted last. And then furthermore, uh, at the end of, you know, since this is near the beginning of 2017. Um, we're almost mid through 2017. Or, no, not really mid through. It's the 9th, so it's still early 2017. But I doubt that much is going to change when a project's been abandoned since 2015. Um, and there are several other projects similar to that where they were doing really good, the interface looked great, and then all of a sudden the project was abandoned for no apparent reason. And it's kind of unfair that OBS and uh, XSplit either buy out these forks or um, maybe even pressure people to not purchase or download these softwares because they have such a large presence that they can do so. And now this is just me speculating. I do not know 100% that this is facts. Um, but if anyone were to be able to find that out, please tell me down in the comments. Um, because the more proof, the better. And I'll even uh, like it and it'll pull it to the top. Um, because frankly, we do need to figure out what is happening in these projects and why they're being shut down. But that's not really the reason that we're here today. Today we are here because OBS um, for the last two days has been completely fucking my day over. Um, I had to reinstall Windows and ever since I was able to stream, my last stream was perfectly fine. But then today... I tried to stream, and it wouldn't record, it wouldn't do anything, 
And I contacted them, and they said it's because of a program called D3D Gear, which I paid $35 for to get a premium license for this software. It's essentially um, Fraps, but better because it's better optimized, and all of the files are really small in comparison to Fraps. And on top of that, the software actually works. Now, some of the features are kind of broken, but that's fine. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with some of the features being broken. As long as it records, perfectly fine. Well, I haven't had this issue ever since I, I installed the application and installed OBS. I installed them both at the exact same time, and there was no issue prior to yesterday. Or, prior to today. Um, this video will probably be edited tonight, and then I'll upload it either tomorrow, the 10th, or the 11th. I'm not sure yet. Um, but what I found that worked is that by downgrading to 0 0.16.5, or simply put 16.5, um, it fixes the issues. I don't have the D3D gear issue um, because I have tried. I have tried to run D3D gear and I've tried to run OBS at the same time. It works. There is no issue with D3D gear. Although, apparently, OBS thinks that because a employee who has now been flagged in Mantis as a developer, um, Osiris has actually said that it is not a bug and it is either intentional or that it's not their problem. And when I insisted saying that, you know, it is your project, you should work around it, they never replied and then they flagged the ticket as a low priority. So I don't know about you guys, but I don't think that's okay. A company blatantly saying, oh, this is a problem, but it's a problem with you who paid for the software and not our software that's free and that's being developed by over 50 people. Here's what I think, and I could be completely wrong here, and if a representative of OBS wishes to speak out and tell me that I'm wrong, Please do so. Set the record straight. Set the record why Osiris doesn't want people to install OBS. But they have no problem with installing Fraps. Now, I could... I, again, I can be completely wrong. I don't know. But the problem here is that Fraps works perfectly fine. No questions asked. But D3D Gear does not. They don't run on the same software. They don't run anything. D3D Gear and um, D3D Gear and Fraps do not run the same software, and neither does D3D Gear and the OBS project, OBS Studio, I guess I should say. This is about OBS Studio, not the classic OBS since they've apparently completely abandoned it at this point and are not releasing any more commits to it and have officially delayed all support. I'm actually recording this on uh, OBS Studio because I don't have another option. OBS has locked me into an environment where I can't move. I can't leave. Because all their files work with OBS. And I can't do anything. And most likely if you stream or record on the PC, you use OBS also. Now you can of course use XSplit, but it's so temperamental most of the time that it doesn't work. At least on every single system that I had, it works for about a week and then stops. Even with a valid license key for a premium subscription, 
I got it working for about a month. And that was the free trial. And then after that, I was done. I couldn't stream. I couldn't record. I couldn't do anything. It was dropping frames left and right. I had an i7 4770K. I haven't tried it ever since because it's not worth my time. Because time now to me is money. And I'm hoping that we can create enough of a stink that OBS will finally look into this issue. We'll finally look into the issue of why this capturing this capturing utility is causing so much problems. Why uh, developer Osiris seems to think that they're God and can change whatever they want on their whim. The fact is that this is an open source project. People can commit to it freely. And frankly, we need to work on it. Because if it's so open source, then why are we all so closed-minded and not allowing other companies to create new software? It sounds just kind of asinine and dumb to me. But that could just be my opinion. I don't know. So tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. If I'm stupid, go ahead and tell me. I'm, I'm used to it at this point. But... I need to know what you guys are thinking. What you guys think is going on. What maybe is going on. I don't know. And that's what scares the piss out of me. Is that we're stuck between two options. Both now are equally bad. Because if you pay for software with one, it may or may not work. The reason I bought D3D gear is because Fraps, which I also paid for doesn't work on my system. D3D Gear does. D3D Gear will record like Halo 5. But Fraps does not. OBS does not. OBS crashes every single time that I try to record Halo 5. For whatever reason, I can have the settings set to 720p on a local recording on a separate hard drive and it still will cripple my system to the point that I can't use it. This is a problem and frankly I think that OBS needs to address this and needs to treat it kinda like how Blueberry Express treated it. Blueberry is in the case that you didn't know a British or a UK company who um, offers a free software called Flashback Express. Flashback Express or Blueberry Express, depending on what generation you're from, is what generation you call it. Um, I always call it Blueberry Express because, you know, that's what I remember it as. But Flashback Express slash Blueberry Exp Express created a file. It was a small file size, and it was the whole recording. You threw it into then proprietary rendering software and rendered out the video. It rendered it in a few minutes because it was already essentially pre-rendered. It was just so that you can edit it and tweak it. OBS needs to work on getting something like that. Because never when I used Flashback Express did I ever have any issues. So what they need to do is have it set up so that it records that file. So whenever you're recording, it saves it to a special uh, proprietary file uh, to OBS Studio. And then you can open like an OBS Studio editor and edit the file. A, this will be great for first-time YouTubers because they'll be able to use OBS, which is a great recording platform as of 16.5. But now that we're at 17, we have so many issues including the ability to just pull our hair out because everything doesn't work. But it would allow YouTube creators who are really tight on a budget to use OBS Studio to record, edit, and render. And maybe even publish if that feature could be enabled. Which, 
I mean, they already have built-in service connections to Twitch, Hitbox, YouTube, etc. So I don't think that it'd be too far-fetched to, you know, enable like two or three clicks and boom, it's done. So I don't think that it'd be that much of an issue. So all you really have to do is question why they aren't doing it. Why they're pushing out little tiny updates here and there that don't really change much and usually make the software worse. Have OBS and all of the people who are committing to it given up? Like all the other projects and all we're going to have is XSplit and a bunch of old degraded projects? Is that all that we're going to have? I don't know. You guys tell me. But out of this doom and gloom, we have one thing, which is what should be done. And this not okay segment is... I'm going to talk about more what should be done in if I ever do more not okays. And what should be done is that OBS needs to listen to their people, to their community. Because I saw a bunch of points that were marked out, canceled, tickets that were ignored. Because they said, oh, it's a one-off thing, it can't be repeated, there's no evidence against it, even though this person went through every single step and took every single precaution. These people, maybe they're one-offs, but it doesn't mean that you need to just cancel their ticket and create, you know, this aura around yourself saying, no, there's nothing wrong. Because when you do that, you ignore every single problem that is wrong. Every single little issue that there could be. At the end of the day, those little issues can cause a big fracture in your program and a big fracture in your community. So my, my suggestion is to get a group of programmers who can look at those issues individually, those little tiny issues... And work on a bigger commit. A bigger section. Now, I know that it's an open source project, so getting people to work together is probably not going to be easy. <laughs> but if you can get people in like a Skype chat or an IRC, get them to work together. Talk about uh, all of these small issues. All these little tiny pieces that can be put together to create a bigger issue in the long run. And fix that bigger issue before it gets that big. You're going to be able to solve the problem before it happens. And you're going to be able to make those users happy and not feel ignored. Second, you got to get into the ideal of an actual studio. Because right now, all I see is OBS Classic with a new look. A new feel. Which is great. I love the look and feel of OBS Studio. I've always loved it. I was, I think, one of the first people to use it and embrace it and even talk about it. But the fact is that OBS Studio is still just OBS. Sure, you can record and stream, but you can't edit. It's not a studio. You can't pause the recording, you can't pause the stream, you can't uh, restart the stream, you can't resume the stream, you can't do any of that. All you can do is start and stop. Which, thankfully, thanks to software like Joycaster, I can essentially pause the stream, tell like all of the companies to pause the stream and wait for me to resume once the, ter once the OBS connection is terminated. But I can only do that with third-party software. You've got to add more continuity to your projects. Because right now, it is just a recorder. It is just a stream engine. Use what you have in front of you. You guys have essentially the open source for Flashback Express. Because I know that there was a point where it was open source. 
and where you could download all of the source files for that project. It wouldn't be too difficult to run a, a separate engine in the background that records in a proprietary file format and then stores that as a small file on the hard drive with uh, maybe material data that um, tells where certain things happened. It would be amazing to think that small YouTube channels can turn to OBS Studio for a video editor, for a streaming engine, and for a, uh, a recorder, a video recorder. I'm not saying, you know, make it like Sony Vegas where you can have 50,000 layers. I'm saying maybe four or five. Like, we're talking Windows Movie Maker Basic. But in the end, Windows Movie Maker was awesome. Back before it became Windows Live Movie Maker and now it's shit, Windows Movie Maker was great. I used it. You had four layers. That worked for me. So please, 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 creators of OBS, come together. And us as a community, we need to come together to create a better OBS studio. Now, I, I'm not going to be the first to say I'm, I'm smart and I'm not going to be the first to say that I can program anything. But the first step is getting together and realizing the issues. Right now, the first issue is that you guys aren't listening to the little problems in your software and you're ignoring them. You're making people feel small and inconsiderate. Or, sorry, you are being inconsiderate and making people feel small and uh, like they aren't needed. Sorry, I'm, I'm blanking on the word. But you guys need to also create an actual studio product. A product that studios will use. Companies will use. Because this, right now, what I'm sitting in front of, what I'm recording with, it's not there yet. And it has to be. With companies like XSplit trying to take you down, trying to make the competition as small as possible, so that there is either paid or free, and you have to choose either one, you want to make sure that the free is better than the paid. Now, I know it may take time, and I know that a few hundred people donating won't be enough. But in the end, it's going to be worth it, because those few hundred people will be satisfied. And if they're satisfied, at least one of their thousand friends will be satisfied. If the trend continues, you will have over 100,000 satisfied users in a few days. So please, OBS, listen to us. Listen to us users. Because that's, at the end of the day, all we are, is users. We're a number in your, char in your charts. That's all we are. We're a number. And I get that. We're issues that you have to deal with on a daily basis. We're problems. But we can also be the solution. Because at the end of the day, it's the user that makes or breaks you as a company. Because at the end of the day, even though there's 50 plus people working on this project, it's still a company. It's still people behind a screen making a profit. And it's not okay that you're shoving a product down our throat that doesn't work. And then making us, making us feel ignored when we address problems that may or may not be of significance. We're just reporting the issues as we see them because we paid for the software 
that you're saying is shit. So please, first, listen to the users. Second, get your asses into gear and issue something better than XSplit. That's my challenge to you, is create something better, something that everyone will use, that even XSplit will wish they had. Because at the end of the day, if XSplit runs out of business, then you're in business. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you if you are an OBS representative and you watch this. Thank you if you are Osiris and watch this. Because I want to know more. And I hope that maybe, maybe I hit on some points that may drive this point home. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked, be sure to hit that like button, dislike, whatever you want. Even though you can't see them, I can, and I know what you guys like and what you don't. So, if you guys also want to subscribe and haven't already, I release videos like this every so often. I'm kind of lazy. I do stream most of the time if OBS decides to work, and I'll be trying FF Split in the near future. Uh, again, if that decides to work, because last time I knew that was broken. Right. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, please tell me them down below in the comments. Down below in the description, you will find ways that you can support me and the channel uh, by buying stuff on Amazon or using any of the affiliate links at sponsors or sponsored dot wolfboy pro dot wolfboytech dot org. God. So, check out the links down below, and may the best software win, because this has been not okay, and I hope to bring you more of these episodes in the near future. So, remember to stay loyal, stay subscribed, I'll see you all next time.